The prosecutor in Berkshire County has gotten rid of bail for many defendants awaiting trial unless they're considered a flight risk or a threat to public safety. Similar policies have been implemented across the country, not without controversy though, with some people questioning if this will lead to a spike in crime. Carolee McGrath sat down recently with Berkshire District Attorney Andrea Harrington to get her take. So in Massachusetts, people can only be held pre-trial if there is, um, if there are danger or they can be held on cash bail if there are concerns um, that they will not return to court. Uh, so in my office, uh, in district court, we have implemented a presumption that we do not seek cash bail uh, for defendants unless there is a demonstrated history that, that for some reason we think that they're a flight risk and that they won't return to court. So why did you implement this policy? Well, you know, a cash bail system is basically, it's un-American, uh, it's discriminatory against people who are impoverished. I mean, two people accused of the same crime with the same kind of evidence, if one person can come up with $500 to be released pre-trial and the other person cannot because of their financial circumstances, uh, to me that's clearly inequitable and it's unfair and it really does not keep our community safe. Okay, talk a little bit about somebody, um, not the flight risk, but somebody who might be deemed violent. What do you do in that situation? Because you say, yeah. um, you know, it doesn't keep people safe, but other people might say, oh my gosh, you know, get that person out of here, out of my community. How does your plan still ensure the community safety? That is a great question. And there is a statute in Massachusetts that allows us to request that a judge hold somebody pretrial if they are a danger to the community or to an individual in the community. And my office has been very aggressive in requesting that the courts hold people that we feel are dangerous. And we present live testimony, we prepare our officers, we present exhibits, and we've been very effective at that. And this way, we're able to you know, distinguish between people that should be behind bars because they're dangerous and people who you know, are, are innocent until proven guilty and uh, can return to their lives and, and continue to work and care for their children and to, uh, to be free until uh, final disposition of their case. What cases would you consider somebody um, who might be violent or dangerous? Like for example, sure. a drug dealer. Would that person be considered violent? Many people would say, absolutely, he's putting poison on the street, but what situation would that apply? Well, so we have made a, dis we've distinguished between district court cases and superior court cases. So the presumption against cash bail uh, exists in district court, and those tend to be, you know, there's about uh, 5,000 district court cases that we handle every year, whereas there's about 130 um, superior court cases. So the vast majority of cases are in district court. Those are lower level offenses. You know, drug traffickers are in superior court, and we do seek um, high cash bail for drug traffickers because I, exactly um, people that are trafficking in narcotics, in fentanyl, in um, poison on the streets, um, that's a public public safety concern. Okay, so um, what kinds of offenses are we talking about in district court? In district court, you know, a lot of um, domestic violence cases, um, assault and battery, uh, crimes involving uh, firearms this in is particular. In, in district court? In district court, yes. And on those cases, would you be looking for bail or dangerousness? On hearing? those cases, we, if there are signs that somebody is a danger, um, we seek to have them held. And we've been successful in those kinds of cases and having those people people held. Mm -hmm. um, in cases where we seek cash bail, uh, it's because people are demonstrated flight risks. If they have tried to flee from the, the police, if they've had a prior history of not coming to court, um, those kinds of things indicating that they need to pay cash bail in order to ensure that they return to court. Um, you know, if there are other means to help people get to court, then then we're open to those kinds of ideas. Um, regular calling in, checking in with probation, potentially maybe GPS monitoring, that kind of thing. Um, but we've uh, other communities that have eradicated cash bail have demonstrated that um, the 
return to court is um, just as good without cash bail as it is with cash bail. And you mentioned a uh, weapons charge. Would that be superior court or district court? Well, it depends. You know, just having a firearm um, those are district court cases. If somebody has a firearm that's in like commission of a crime, then generally those would tend to be superior court cases. Okay. Uh, what about for people who do say, listen, I'm really worried that this is going to cause a spike in crime. I know that that was a concern in New Jersey when they passed, you know, a similar measure. I know yeah. there was bail reform in New Hampshire as well. Yeah. There are some people who really feel like, hey, this is being a little soft. I don't like this. Well, you know, I, I made a promise to the voters of Berkshire County that I would set policies based on data and evidence and fairness. And in places where um, cash bail reform has been implemented, it's been very sex successful in New Jersey, um, Washington, D.C., um, Philadelphia. All of their data has demonstrated that releasing nonviolent offenders pre-trial without cash bail has no impact on public safety, no negative impact on public safety. In fact, there's a there's a uh, something called criminogenic. And that's kind of a new buzzword. But it, what it means is that people who go to jail or have interactions with the criminal justice system tend to commit more crimes. So it, the data really shows that keeping people out of jail is what builds uh, public safety. And certainly we distinguish between people that are dangerous and people who, you know, are you know struggling with mental health problems, struggling with substance use disorders. We look at the underlying reasons as to why people are committing crimes. And really, you know, we're looking for solutions that address those problems. You know, we can jail people who commit crimes, certainly, but at a certain point, you know, those people are going to get out of jail. And the people who spend time in jail, you know, have much higher recidivism rates than people who um, are kept out of the system. What are you hearing from members of the uh, law enforcement community? Well, you know, we really um, have worked hard to build our relationships with our law enforcement partners. Uh, they're hearing a lot more communication from my office. We communicate with them um, because they're on the streets. They know what's going on in the community. We communicate with them about, you know, who's dangerous and who's not. And they're involved in the process. And they, they've, the feedback I'm getting is that people, law enforcement has been very uh, pleased with the results because we've been very effective in having people held who are dangerous. Okay, uh, slightly different issue, and as a prosecutor, I'm just curious um, your your take on this. You have introduced this as I'd say in the last year or so, there has been criticism of the criminal justice system in general. Mm -hmm. um, people saying that judges are too lenient mm -hmm. on on bail for people who are violent. This is obviously a different scenario because I'm yeah. sure you've been in that spot where you've been frustrated as well as a yes. prosecutor. Sure, I mean, we've had um, um, people that district court judges have um, agreed with us to hold people as dangerous and they have the right to appeal that and we have had uh, the superior court reverse at least two of those findings. So certainly, you know, there's separation of powers. You know, my job serves its function. The ju judiciary serves their function and uh, I certainly respect that. But we don't always see eye to eye. Um, you know, I'm an elected official. I'm out. I'm in the community. I'm talking to people, and um, you know, I take into account, um, you know, what my community needs to to feel safe and to be safe, um, living in their homes and being out on the streets in Berkshire County. And you know, the judges have uh, they have a different duty.